welcome back in the previous video that we talked about uh, the system designs we talked about caching today we'll talk about the caching strategies and how to use the right one so let's first talk about um caching so a caching is the way to improve uh, performance and latency and also to reduce the um, load of the database so the caching is an in-memory storage and it's responsible for storing the frequently accessed data and uh, and um, and, get, uh, and and give it to the server right away so basically the server will not have to reach for the database each every time sorry this way. so the server basically will not have to reach for um let's give yeah when I have to reach for the database every time and instead of that it will just ask for the ca the cache if the cache has a data and if the cache has a data it will be sent back and which will be super fast since the the cache is um, in memory storage and it will be we 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 uh, we reduce the latency and the other thing that we we um, reduce the overload of the known the database that being said we need to know um which uh, caching strategy in distributed systems are available for us and how to choose the right one. So caching strategies in distributed systems play a crucial role in improving performance and reducing latency and offloading backend resources. Choosing the right caching strategy depends on uh, your specific use case requirements and uh, uh, specific rules, your specific rules, gate requirements, and system architecture. So let's first talk about the uh, uh, the the first one, which will be the read through cache. So the read through cache. I put the cache here between them. And so when we have any read operation, it will be read it will be uh, uh, write, for write through cache. So when we have any write operation, it will be write to uh, the the cache first, and after that it will be write, being write to the database. So how it works in, in the write through caching, data is first written to uh, the cache, and then the underlying data store uh, reads also goes through the cache. Uh, this is this strategy ensure that the cache is always up to date and the updated data store so when i write a new data it will be stored in the cache and after that it will be stored in the database and i'll make sure that um, the read operations also go from the cache so the use cases for this one we use it if you uh, a write through caching is suitable for uh, for scenarios where data consistency is crucial and you want to minimize the risk of uh, the stale data Consideration or maybe the cones of it, it will be it 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 can increase write uh, latency due to the extra write operation in the cache. So when I write first, I write it to the cache, and after that, I write it to the database, and uh, and this could increase the latency. And uh, but since I write it to the cache, when the server try to get the data again, it will get directly quite fast, and also uh, we will get a consistent data. The other thing that we have. Um, uh, right behind caching or right behind and right through so this one in 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 right behind caching data is first written to the database like let me let me delete this one so the data is first li uh, let me also let me also delete this one because yeah so what will happen the data first will be written to the database okay and um, and uh, yeah, and, and the data is first written to the to the cache. Sorry, the data is being written first to the cache, and then synchronously it will be written to the underlying data store. This can improve the write performance. So in the previous one, we write to the cache and the cache write to the data store or the database, and it, we say that this could improve the uh, this could have the problem with the with the with the with the. Um, uh, with the latency because we could might increase the write latency, but the the write behind cache we write we write to the cache and after that asynchronously that the, uh, the cache will take its time to write to the database and the use case for this one it will be uh, right behind caching is useful when write performance is primary concern 
So if I I I need to care a lot about the latency and um, and you can and, and also you can tolerate some eventual consistency because when you write the, to the cache you just make sure you just assume that the cache will will send a, a, do a write request in the in into the database maybe this write request will be denied maybe it will have a network error maybe it have something so we we might at some point have inconsistency so we have what we call eventual consistency so if you can tolerate or, or you can af af afford some eventual consistency between the cache and the data store and and the right um and the the right performance is primary concern is you can take this one the consideration about this one there is a risk of data loss if the cache cache uh, uh, crashes before writes or flushes to the data store so if the cache have a problem before sending the uh, thing uh, sending data to the data store we can we might have a problem so we have um read through cache uh, this one is that in in read through caching uh, data is read from the cache so far as we if we have a read request it will be read from uh, data will be read from the cache if if the data is not in the cache the cache fetches it from the data store uh, catch and after that catches it and then returns it so the server will will send uh, will, will want to read something or the client want to read something it will try to see first in the cache if we couldn't find it it will try to look it to the database and the database will send it back to the cache and the cache will send it back to the server and the cache will store this data in, and the cache will store the data for future uses so and the use cases for this one read through cache is suitable for uh, scenarios where read performance is a priority and you want to minimize the load on the data store um, and actually this example we use this example in the previous video that when we talk about cache uh, the consideration about this strategy is that it can introduce cache misses when data is not present in the cache um, let's call let's talk about the cache site or lazy uh, loading uh, so um, how this one how this one is work because it's a quite interesting um, Let me just first pull this one here and make it like that because the, this one is quite different so and in the cache in the cache side uh, cache uh, in the cache side caching the application code is responsible for interacting with the cache directly it retrieves data from the cache when needed and updates the cache when uh, the data uh, changes so basically what happened here the server is uh, that server is connected with the with the cache and also at the same time connected with the database and the server controls what are what is in the cache and controls what is in the database so the server whenever wants to get anything from the cache and want to add what thing to the database so uh, the use case for this one cache site acting as a versatile and can be used when you need to find great control over caching and don't want to introduce a caching layer that manages that manages data synchronization automatically uh, the consideration about this one developers need to manage cache interaction in application code and this will be quite tough and um, and and uh, and that's th that's basically the most famous caching strategy we have maybe other two more but it will be outside of the scope and maybe I, in the future i could make a dedicated video for each caching strategy uh, so we can talk in depth on it um but let's just uh, try to talk about uh some like choosing the right consistency strategy. So uh, let's talk about some 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 of the of the things that it's important to put in mind. Yeah. So the first thing that we want to consider data access pattern. So understand the read and write patterns of your application. If reads significantly outnumber writes, uh, or you have a read heavy caching uh, strategies. So uh, if 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 um, if if read significantly out outnumbers uh, uh, the writes operations, that means we have a read heavy caching strategy, and this um, and that means it would be great to use the read heavy caching strategy. Uh, let's talk about the co uh, data consistency co requirement. The second thing that we should care about is that uh, give me a minute. data consistency requirement so in this one um, determine how important data consistency is for your application for some applications strong consistency is crucial while others can tolerate eventual consistency 
um, and we have uh, white and red performance as well so um, also you should evaluate whether you need to optimize write or reads performance and to choose caching strategies accordingly we want to talk about the cache size which is quite important to talk about so um, you should um, assess the complexity of um, implementing and managing the caching strategy uh, simpler strategies like cache aside and may be preferred when uh, uh, fine granting control uh, needed we want to talk about uh, testing so uh, uh, truly uh, uh, truly uh, test your uh, chosen caching strategy to ensure it mean it meets your performance and consistency requirements under under real world conditions also we want to talk about monitoring So um, implement monitoring on logging to track uh, cache performance hit rates and cache related issue. Uh, also, um, and uh, you, we can talk about also uh, some some important consideration is adaptability. Uh, so be prepared to adjust uh, your caching strategy as your application's requirement evolve. So uh, the choice of caching strategy should uh, align with your application's uh, goals and, cons and, and, and constraints. In some cases, uh, combinations of caching strategies may be used within uh, the same system to address different data access patterns and requirements. So um, that's it for today's video and I hope you like my content. If you like my content, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll never miss a video and see you guys in future problem.